In today's video, I'm taking a look at the Blackmagic Zoom and Focus Demands. Now they give you precise control over the zoom and focus of your lenses directly from your tripod handles. So you can pan, tilt, zoom and focus all at the same time. Let's dive straight in. I'll show you what they are, how they work and a few hidden features they've got too. Looking at the Focus Demand first then, in the box you get the Focus Demand itself which is actually a lot bigger than I was expecting, but I like that about it. The large size gives you a lot of control when you're using it, and it also feels extremely well built. The wheel is smooth to turn, for example, and there is some resistance there as you turn it, which gives it a really good feeling of precision. Also in the box is the mounting bracket for mounting to your tripod and the USB-C cable as well. Now, quick note, at the time of recording this video, the zoom and focus demands are only compatible with the Blackmagic Studio Camera 4K Plus and Pro models, and also the Ursa Broadcast G2. Getting it set up is super easy. First, make sure that your camera is running on the latest Blackmagic firmware. Older firmware might not actually recognize the devices when you plug them in. With the camera updated, now you can mount the focus demand to your tripod handle using the supplied clamp mount and plug it in using the USB cable provided. Now these demands would usually be mounted to larger video tripods that have dual handles so you can have one on each hand. All of my large tripods are currently out on a job, so for demonstration purposes in this video, I'm going to use my little Manfrotto tripod. Plug one end into your camera's A port and the other into the port labelled cam on the focus demand. The Blackmagic USB-C cables do have locking screws for extra protection, but I have tested generic USB-C cables as well and those work perfectly fine too. Kind of useful to know in case you ever lose or forget a cable on a shoot. One really cool thing if you are looking to use both the focus and zoom demands at the same time is that you can actually daisy chain the two devices using the loop port to connect the focus demand to the zoom demand. This means you're only using one USB-C port on your camera, which keeps the second free for plugging in things like external SSD drives for recording. And that's it. Now you're ready to use it. It is worth noting that any active Micro Four Thirds lens will work with the Blackmagic focus demands and there's plenty of choice out there with over 50 MFT lenses available. Right now I'm using the Panasonic Lumix 45 to 175 mm which also has power zoom but we'll get onto that in a second. You can see that as I turn the wheel the camera is smoothly shifting focus between the box in the background and the one in the foreground. It takes a little getting used to and it is pretty sensitive but it allows you to get really precise focus. I also like the three control pins, which you can use for even finer adjustments. Don't forget as well, you can turn on focus assist in the camera settings, and that will show you the areas that are in focus as you turn the wheel. That pretty much sums up the focus demand. It really does make shifting focus extremely smooth and simple, much smoother, for example, than if you were trying to do it on the actual lens body itself. Now I can see quite a few use cases for the focus demand. Obviously it's designed to be mounted to a tripod and used to quickly focus the camera as you pan and tilt. But I also, I could see it being useful, maybe clamping it to the side of your desk and to use it as a way to quickly adjust the camera's focus for times like this, where you're a one man band, you're shooting on your own and you don't have a camera operator there to do it for you. Or what I've been using it for recently is when I want to do a really smooth product shot where the focus shifts to the product. I actually used to try and do this on the lens itself and I'd always get wobbles or focus jumps. But now with the focus demand, I can actually just hold it in my hand and get super smooth focus shifts of my product. If I had to make one suggestion of improvements for the focus demand, it would simply be an option added in the settings where you could select the sensitivity level of the wheel. It is quite sensitive, which I like, but it took me some time to get used to. Being able to select maybe low, medium or high sensitivity, I think it would be really useful for beginners. Okay, time to move on to the one that I think people really want to hear about, the zoom demand. But before I do, let me talk to you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. With topics like film and video, graphic design, illustration, photography, marketing and many more, it's an amazing way to get started learning something new or grow your skills by learning from experts. So if you're looking to learn about animation, for example, then Jake Bartlett's Animating With Ease in After Effects course is the one for you. Or maybe you wanna up your YouTube game. If so, definitely check out Marquez Brownlee's YouTube success class. I'm taking it at the moment and have found it so useful when it comes to writing my scripts and planning out my videos. And I know many of you who watch my videos for Black Magic stuff 
are looking to learn more about DaVinci Resolve. Well, Skillshare has a number of classes for both color grading and editing that are perfect for beginners. Like this DaVinci 17 course from Mustafa Nassar. He's created short but detailed videos explaining each section of DaVinci and all of the effects and functions built into it. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And because I've teamed up with Skillshare on this video, the first 1,000 people who use the link in my description will receive a one month free trial to Skillshare Premium so you can explore your creativity. On to the Zoom demand then. In the box, it's a similar story as before. You get the Zoom demand itself, which again feels very well made and has a nice weight to it. You also get a mounting bracket and a USB-C cable. Again, another quick note, for the Zoom demand to work, you do need to have a micro four thirds lens that supports power zoom. Where the focus demand supports more than 50 lenses right now, the Zoom demand supports four. These ones right here on screen. I'm doing this demo with a Panasonic Lumix 45 to 175 millimeter lens, as mentioned before, which does have power zoom built in. You'll notice that on the zoom demand, there are a few more dials and buttons compared to the focus demand. First off, you have the thumb rocker. This is what allows you to control the zoom of the lens. Push it to the right to zoom in and then to the left to zoom out. You can also reverse this direction in the settings menu if needed. Again, it's got a great feel to it. The rocker will spring back to the middle when no pressure is applied, for example. And the further you push the rocker, the faster your zoom gets. The other way to control your zoom speed is by using the speed dial. So if you want a slow zoom, you can actually turn that all the way down. And then it doesn't matter how much you push the rocker, it will remain a steady slow zoom in or out. You can also adjust the speed dial while you're zooming to slow up or speed up a zoom. But I don't think you'd want to do that because that would require two hands. Now here's where some of the secret functions of the device come in. Because the speed dial can actually be mapped in the software to control other things too. So you can change it to control the headphone level, for example or adjust the iris of the lens. Or my personal favorite, you can actually use it to adjust the focus of the lens, which is kind of cool if you just have the zoom demand and not the focus demand as well. Now I did just want to give some quick thoughts and feedback about the zoom itself before I move on to talk about the function buttons. And obviously a lot of this is actually less about the zoom demand, which is a controller for the lens and more about the actual lenses themselves and the way they work. Firstly, in my experience so far, the zoom is super smooth. Zooming in and out with the focus demand really does give more of a broadcast TV type feel, which is surprising because you're essentially using photography lenses. But something to bear in mind is that all of these powered zoom lenses are variable aperture lenses, meaning that if you have your aperture wide open as you zoom in, the aperture or the f-stop actually increases and therefore the camera lets in less light. So you can actually visibly notice as you're zooming in the shot getting darker. Now you can compensate for this by using a higher f-stop and more gain in the beginning and this keeps the shot brightness pretty consistent throughout the zoom. Again, that's more down to the way that lenses work, but I thought it was worth mentioning. One other thing I noted while using both the focus demand and the zoom demand together with this particular lens was that as soon as I started a zoom, it would actually lock the focus demand from making any focus changes mid zoom. As soon as the zoom had finished, I could actually shift focus again. Now I'm not 100% sure, but I actually don't think it was the focus demand causing this behavior. I think this was actually down to the lens itself, as when I tried the zoom and focus simultaneously using the lens rings, it had the exact same effect. Again, I thought it was worth mentioning as it surprised me, and I've reached out to Blackmagic for clarification on whether this is actually a feature, a bug, or nothing to do with the demands, and it is in fact dependent on the lens. If I get clarification, I will put it in the comments down below. Let's talk buttons because this thing has plenty of them. In fact, there are four function buttons on the zoom demand, and all of them can be programmed to do different things in the camera's settings menu. But by default, you have the F1 button at the top to trigger the recording in the camera. The F2 buttons are located on both sides, so you can use it with either hand. And it enables the quick zoom feature, which is useful to punch in to check focus. The F3 button on the bottom triggers the program return feed on the 4K Pro model. And the F4 also on the bottom triggers the push to talk on the 4K model when using it with SDI-based ATEM switches. So you can trigger talk back to the director. 
Now, again, all these can be changed and fully customized in the menu. So you could have F3, for example, to turn on and off the status text or F4 to enable the frame guidelines. There's loads of possibilities and it's great to have that flexibility there. Okay, before I finish up the video, I had to try one thing. Even though it's not officially supported, can the zoom and focus demands work with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras? Well, I updated my camera, plugged them in, and sadly the answer is nope, nothing. So yeah, that answered that question. I'm not sure why they don't work, and hopefully it's something that Blackmagic can enable in the software in the future. I'd love to see it come to the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera range. A lot of people still use these cameras in live stream and live studio environments. Plus, personally, the focus demand with a long USB-C cable would be a great follow focus alternative for the Pocket Cinema cameras. Just saying. Okay, so that's about it for this video, guys. If you found it useful and you liked it, please do give it a thumbs up here on YouTube. That really does help. If you want to see more videos like this one, hit the subscribe button down below and don't forget to turn on the notification bell. I'm actually thinking of taking a look at this bad boy next, the Blackmagic Studio Converter for the Studio Camera 4K Pro. So if you want to see that, hit subscribe. And of course, if you have any questions or comments about today's video, put them down in the comments below. I read through all of them and we'll try to reply to as many of them as possible. And if you've got a particular question that you want answered, my email address is on screen now. You can email me and we'll book in a one-to-one -one consulting session. Maybe you'd like to implement the focus and zoom demands in your workflow, or you've got any other question about live streaming, ping me an email and we'll book in that session. And once you've done all that, guys, I'll see you on the next one.